Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, pla praise the Lord. Sorry, I was reading something that we were going to use. Uh, it just came to me. May the Lord Jesus be glorified. I hope you're all doing well and excited about today. And, uh, and I, I believe if you have a hearing heart, it will bless you. Uh, I am not the, the prophetic school. We did Dreaming Prophets Part 1 uh, last summer, right? And the second one is coming. But this is something that I already taught them, but I'm going to allow you to participate in to be blessed. And I... Uh, my prayer is always simple, is that God will give you the grace in understanding spiritual matters. Again, and I, I know this is like a broken record. I've said it a million times. We suffer because we don't understand spiritual things. Not because we don't pray. We have no wisdom, no understanding of things that are important. The Bible does not say my people perish because of lack of prayer. Praying is not our problem. We pray too much. Even things that don't need prayer, we pray. Yes, the Bible says pray about everything. But there are things that don't need prayer. There are things that just need faith. You know God is going to do it. That itself is prayer. Awareness, consistent awareness of God. Knowing that God sees me. God watches me. You thinking of God itself is being present with God. Are you understanding? That's why it says, acknowledge the Lord in all your ways. How do you acknowledge him? By being mindful of him. Not just thinking of him when you're about to do something, but having the knowing that the Lord God's eye is always upon his people. He is omnipresent. He's omniscient. All these things are a form of prayer and intimacy with God. Because the Bible says, pray without ceasing. Who actually says 24-7, God Almighty. No, you can't do that. It's impossible. No, you will cease to pray. But your flesh may stop to pray, but your spirit is still praying. Your soul may still be praying. Because sometimes you may be doing things and you're praying in your heart or what you call praying in your mind. And then there are times you pray with your spirit. So just because you don't see me praying, it doesn't mean I'm not praying. Because there are dimensions and aspects of prayer. I hope this makes sense. So praying without ceasing, people think I'm going to go to the mountain for 21 days. That may be the only time you have prayed according to God. When you leave the mountain, prayer has stopped. Only for the 20 minutes or 30 minutes or 5 minutes or 1 minute that you pray daily. So prayer is much more profound than just, oh, Father, I need this. No, it's much more intimate than that. Worship is a, prayer, is a form of prayer. Praise is a form of prayer. You know, all these are aspects of prayer, but that is not our problem. Our issue is we don't know. My people perish because of lack of knowledge. Not wisdom. Because wisdom is the application of knowledge. If you have no knowledge, you have no wisdom. Because wisdom is the instruction of God on how to carry out something. That is why the Bible tells you Sol, uh, Solomon asked God for wisdom. He didn't ask him for knowledge. He said, Father, I want wisdom so I can lead your great people. I want instruction because whoever is to be wise must be instructed. Then what did God do? The Bible tells you Solomon had knowledge of everything, not wisdom of everything, knowledge of everything. Even the smallest plant he knew about it. How? Because you cannot have wisdom unless you have knowledge. But anyone who prioritizes knowledge over wisdom is somebody that will go into idolatry. Adam and Eve fell because they did not want wisdom. They wanted knowledge. God does not forbid knowledge as long as you desire him to instruct you. Uh, now you missed it. Maybe you didn't get it. So always remember this. I personally, as a prophet, when people come to me and say, prophet, I want to prophesy, I always ask why. If their desire is not to instruct people, to bring people to the Lord, to deliver people from oppression, I will not pray for them, nor will I teach them. Why? 
Because they want knowledge of the spirit, but they don't want the instructor of the spirit that is Jesus. That's diabolical. That's demonic. Knowledge is given by God. The Bible says the things that God has revealed is for us and our children and our children's children. But what he has hidden is for himself. So every knowledge that is available is actually God. Satan only perverted. But knowledge comes from God. All wisdom, power, understanding, knowledge comes from God. But can it be perverted? Absolutely. But the knowledge itself is not perverted. Somebody can misinform you by twisting what God said. See, like Satan asked them, did God say you can, what did God say you can't eat? He said, no, he didn't say we can't eat anything. He said we can eat everything except this one. Say, so, oh, this one, oh, I know what this tree is. You know, he doesn't want you to eat. He doesn't want you to eat so that you're not like him. First of all, that was a lie. Man was created to be like God. Genesis 1.26, let us make man in our image after our likeness. You are created to be like God. So why would God forbid you what makes you like him? See, the problem is God visited them at the cool of the evening. Why? To instruct them. And the instruction at, a, at some point was going to lead to the tree of knowledge. The tree of knowledge wasn't bad. God told them, on the day you eat of, it, of this, not on the day I give it to you. Amen, there are things if your children go after, they will get hurt. But when you give it, it's good. Because you know exactly how to give it. You know when to give it. Not all knowledge is profitable at, at every time. No, some knowledge is not profitable now. When my son was much younger... My son believed, now he's 14, he's about to be 15. My son believed dad will be with me forever. But now he's 14, since he, he turned 13, since he turned 13, that is in, in the spirit is the age of responsibility. You begin to understand life for what it is. It is the age of accountability begins spiritually. That if you mess up now, Especially when you get to 16, ah, hell you can go. Yes, because you're mature enough to be instructed. There are no babies in hell. There are no children in hell. Ah, but you can definitely find children, people in the age of accountability. Once you enter in the area of doing things that adults do, you start combating adults and things like that. It becomes very dangerous if you've hit the age of accountability. But this is a whole other story. But God is still gracious because they still don't know. They have no life experience. You understand? And sometimes we parents are the ones that endanger our kids because we, we are negligent on structuring them. And that becomes a problem that now we have to be accountable to God because we were not present. And we did not help them when they needed us. It becomes a problem. That's why it's very important. A lot of parents that are not there for their kids. Whew, I'm praying for you. Oh, because you will answer to God for it. You will. It's very important to be there. Best as you can. Best as you can. Your best. I sit with him and I tell him, Andrew... There's a day that you come, will come, I won't be here if the Lord doesn't come. There's a day that will come, I won't be here. You have to be able to do this and do this and do this and do this. Yes, Dad, I understand. But if I told him that seven years ago, he would go into shock. He would go into confusion. It made me easy for me to communicate with him these truths because he saw his uncle laying in a casket that he loved, his favorite uncle, that he used to care for. So the reality of life unlocked a little faster. So it's good. Knowledge is not bad. It's just at the right moment. So when it comes to spiritual things, it is the same thing. Dreams are extremely important. And I know many of you, um, especially all over the world mainly, people believe in Satan giving dreams. That's complete lies. It's not true. 
It's not true. Absolutely not true. The mechanism of dreams was designed for God to communicate to you. Now, if your soul is corrupted, the message will be perverted. You will not only misunderstand, you will think you're in a spiritual battle, yet it is God revealing something to you. How else will you pray against something you don't know? Because dreams are revelatory gift. They are part of visions. Just like I can see visions when I am up praying for people, ministering to people. Dreams are exactly the same, just in the reverse. I am laying down and I sleep. Amen. That's why the Bible calls them visions of the night. If you read Daniel chapter 4, Daniel speaks about visions of my head, visions of the night. That's what dreams are. If you read Job, he tells you about uh, when, when men are slumbering in the bed. God, it says God speaks once or twice and man perceiveth it not. In a dream, in the vision of the night, when men slumbereth upon the bed, the Lord comes to them and takes their message and puts it between their ears and seals it to keep man from pride. So there is no instruction you've ever asked God and he didn't give you. You just failed to perceive. There is nothing you have ever asked God to give you and he didn't. Father, show me what to do and he didn't. No, he showed you everything. The problem is you fail to perceive. The information is still inside of you. Because it's sealed within you. Because remember what the scripture says. It says it this way. It says, it is a king's glory to search out things. God wants you to search out things. So I'm going to speak to you about fundamentals of interpreting dreams and we're going to read some scriptures and then I'll take some questions from, from you and, and uh, it will help you to understand the basic fundamental of, of dreaming. Now, number one, there are people who don't dream. There are people who don't dream. Wave your hands if you don't get dreams or you don't remember your dream. Wave your hand. No, it's okay. Wave your hand. Anyone else? Okay. I've met a lot of people that couldn't dream after after spending a little time with me, they all dream. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Yeah, 100%. You should dream. If you have a soul, you should dream. If you're not dreaming, it means your soul is affected. There is more flesh than there is spirit. So your soul is under attack. So you have been blinded that you can't see even when God wants you to see. Do you get what I'm saying? It's like you've put blinders on your eyes. You do dream, but when you sleep and you wake up, it is blank. You don't even remember that you saw anything. It means your spirit memory and your soul memory are affected that you cannot perceive. The message is there, but the awareness is not there. So when you sleep, it just goes black, and when you wake up, it's like morning. But... It is the awareness is not there. It's like somebody that is under general uh, anesthesia. You know, you are out. You don't know what happened. You just wake up. You're in recovery room. It's the same thing. So tonight we'll also pray for those who don't dream to start dreaming. Because it's your portion to dream. You should dream. It's the will of God. Sin and fleshliness kills the ability to dream. If you're not spiritually conscious, immediately he takes it away. Because once the devil takes that from you, you have no sight at all. You see, many of you have been taught to bind evil dreams instead of binding the spirit haunting you in the dream. <laughs> Yet it's a revelation. Oh, you know, I, uh, prophet, I'm having bad dreams. No. It should be prophet. I am seeing this 
and I'm seeing that, then we deal with those things. You want to stop the ability to see, yet that is what is, it's CCTV. It's revelation of what is happening that you cannot perceive when you're awake. It is when you lay down that it is easier for these things to be brought up to you. Because, you know, even dreams from God can be scary. So a scary dream doesn't mean it's demonic. I'll say that one more time. A scary dream doesn't mean it's demonic. Just like meeting an angel and you pass out because of fear doesn't make it a demon. You don't feel peace when you see God. You feel terror. Worse than any demon you will see. You think your life has come to an end. You will look at yourself and you say, man, the, may the ground swallow me. You know, we have a false Christianity yeah. where it tells you when you see angels, you can ask, are you from God? Or are you from? Look, at it, look in the scriptures, people who met angels and what happened. Men passed out somewhere on their knees, some had to be touched to get strength. Very few people could stand in the presence of an angel and it didn't affect them. That is why I always say, Mary, Mary the mother of the Lord Jesus was very spiritually deep. Because for an angel to appear to you physically and you have a conversation like it's normal, yeah. it means it's not the first time. Yeah. I wish you could understand this. And the Bible doesn't tell you it's the first time. It doesn't make that assumption for you. 